Today is Ed Charbonneau. Ed, how are you? I'm doing excellent, David. How are you? I'm doing great. It's good to see. You. It's been a long time. It has been. Uh, you know, all the 2020 events that uh, could have been, should have been, would have been, we missed yeah. out on. But at least we're getting together now. We are. Tell me, what do you do? Uh, so I am a senior developer advocate for Progress Software. Uh, mm -hmm. You might know us from the Telerik brand of UI tool, tools and components. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am a developer advocate for mainly Blazor, Telerik UI for Blazor right now. So I've been working on it uh, since the early beta days of Blazor. So I've got about, I'd say about three years of experience now with Blazor and uh, pretty happy Plus. with the product that we're turning out. That's about all anybody has. Blazor's not that old. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I saw saw, saw C Steve Sanderson um, giving a presentation at the MVP Summit uh, about three years ago. And I think this was w one of the first times it was ever shown anywhere. I think he might have done a, a brief uh, introduction to it at one of the NDC um, uh, conferences in London. Uh, mm -hmm. prior to that. But uh, other than that, this was the first time the community at large had seen it. And there was literally a standing ovation in the room from all of my fellow MVPs as he nice. tried to present this. So I, you know, with that type of reaction from the crowd I was with, I knew it was going to be something special. So I went back to our engineers at uh, Progress and immediately uh, started experimenting with them to see mm -hmm. what we could do with it. Uh, really quickly, what's, uh, tell us what is Blazor? So Blazor is a single page application framework or a SPA framework uh, that is very similar to React or Angular in the JavaScript world, except Blazor is .NET, um, is built with .NET. It runs .NET code, and it does this with WebAssembly. So uh, your browser has WebAssembly, which is a bytecode um, that it can execute. And the .NET runtime has been compiled to WebAssembly to run natively in the browser. So with uh, the .NET runtime in the browser, you can load .NET apps in the browser. And Blazor lets you run these web applications written with .NET code uh, in the browser without having to write JavaScript for uh, doing front-end web development. That's very cool. And if you're a C-sharp developer, you can just stick with the language that you know and use all the power of that language. Absolutely. Um, now, the reason I want to talk to you is I saw a presentation you did for .NET Conf on testing mm -hmm. Blazor applications. Are, are there unique challenges to testing an app, a Blazor application as opposed to other types of apps? Uh, so the approach that I come um, at this from is not so much that there's a challenge testing things. It's actually one of the main uh, strengths of Blazor, in my opinion. Um, what Blazor has a little bit of a weak point at right now is the uh, design time experience. So when you're developing a JavaScript application, a lot of JavaScript developers are pretty accustomed to something called hot reloading, uh, where you can work on a component for the application and the app will re-render that exact uh, piece of UI that you're working on in real time, you know, as you make say uh, changes to the file and save those changes. Um, as opposed since... to re-rendering everything in the browser. Yes, correct. So if you're working on uh, an alert widget, just that alert widget will refresh. You know, if you're changing colors or adding parameters to it, uh, this will be kind of a you know a instant result that you can see uh, as you're developing. Now with Blazor, since it's a compiled .NET application, there's some compilation steps that have to take place. Uh, that process also requires the application to reboot. So uh, while we do have like a hot refresh type of uh, experience in Blazor, where if you save some changes, it will refresh the browser tab and pull your application back up with those new changes that have been compiled. Um, it isn't quite as a instant uh, experience uh, that mm. you get with JavaScript. 
Oh, so the um, latency is really the biggest challenge there. Yeah, there's there's some latency in the developer experience there. When you're you know you save your file uh, on a small project, it might be hard to see because you know small projects kind of compile very quickly. But if you have if you have something rather complex, then maybe this is going to start slowing down as your application gets larger. You can see that with JavaScript apps too. Uh, when those things get larger, that that refresh experience starts to slow down as well. So mm -hmm. it's not a perfect world on either side. Uh, but what you can do... Um, it's not with... test. It's just get <laughs> test in production. Well, what people are doing with this uh, hot reloading technology is they're using it as kind of like a, a validation of what they're working on. Uh, so they're kind of, in a sense, doing testing um, in the browser. But those tests aren't saved anywhere. It's a manual process that the developer is doing. Uh, so it's not something that you benefit from in the long term. So I suggest to uh, .NET developers working on Blazor that they check out some of the unit testing features that you can leverage with Blazor because you can get that real-time uh, kind of iteration on the components you're working on uh, through these unit test frameworks. And then you will also have unit tests to carry forward throughout the lifetime of the application to you know, test for regressions and breaking changes. And uh, you have something you know, that, that gives you assurance that your application is running correctly. Uh, so, no, I don't understand. The, um, the, the hot reloading is, is supported in Blazor or is not supported? Um, it's supported where it will reload the entire application, not just the component that you're working on. Okay. So if I have an alert box and I'm trying to change the color of it and uh, I'm working with some CSS or some, uh, uh, some parameters that... Uh, you know, the component needs to be re recompiled to um, take advantage of. Okay. When I save that file, it's going to recompile the app and reload that browser tab completely. So okay. in JavaScript world, uh, depending on how uh, big the change is to that component, it may just re-render that actual component itself. So you won't see the browser tab refresh. You won't see the loading icon or anything like that on that tab. Uh, it'll just instantaneously, you know, re-render that HTML that belongs to that component. I see. Are, are there tools that can make this easier for a Blazor developer? Yeah, so uh, Blazor apps are completely unit testable uh, f across the entire stack. Since we're using .NET, um, it's very plausible that uh, the application you know, backend is written in .NET. Uh, maybe you're running some uh, MVC on the back end, uh, maybe you're using gRPC or SignalR with ASP.NET on the back end, and you're sharing some business logic or some classes with your front end as well. Because they're all .NET, you might have mm -hmm. shared uh, logic across all of your application. So any of that stuff you can test with XUnit. Uh, that's just the normal .NET unit test framework. Yeah. Um, when you talk about components that are rendering UI logic, uh, so you're, you're rendering HTML and CSS uh, through these components that are written in .NET. Um, there is a framework that you can add to your uh, test stack called BUnit. Hmm. Uh, so BUnit is a library written by a gentleman named Eagle Hansen. Uh, he's, a, he's out of Iceland. He's a Microsoft hmm. MVP. And uh, it's a really excellent framework that he's put together. Uh, for doing these unit tests. So what's nice about BUnit is it will do a semantic HTML comparison between uh, what you expect to get from your component and the actual rendering of the component. Hmm. So this uh, semantic HTML comparison that it does isn't a simple string comparison. So in HTML, if you have things like white space or maybe your uh, class attributes are in a different order, uh, hmm. that doesn't affect the actual rendering of that component on the screen. Yeah. It has no bearing on how it operates. It's just, uh, you know, it's just s the semantics of the code. Yeah. Uh, so it won't error out if those classes are out of order or if maybe there's a, a piece of white space that you missed. Yeah, this is more like the properties of an object than just a string comparison. 
Yeah. So it's very intelligent in that way. Uh, it ha also has um, some helpers in uh, the framework for doing things like button clicks and you know interacting with elements. Um, you can do very uh, uh, small comparisons on just specific properties, HTML properties that are rendered. So if I have a class attribute, I can just check uh, to make sure that it, it contains a certain string or something like that. Uh, make sure my accessibility attributes are there, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's a whole slew of different unit tests that we can put against our components when we're writing them. And uh, we can run those unit tests very quickly without even loading the application in the browser whatsoever. Is, is being it just for the, the UI, the front end part of the application? Yeah. That's correct. So B unit okay. would be just for the UI portion of the application. Um, you would use X unit for the rest of the application or whatever your favorite fr uh, test okay. framework in .NET That's, is. You don't have you're not tied to X unit. You can use N unit, for example. Absolutely. So there's there's some helpers that um, that will assist you uh, extension methods and things that will assist you with other uh, .NET test frameworks. Uh, so mm -hmm. you can use any. Uh, test framework you'd like with BUnit. It's pretty agnostic in that respect. Um, there's, uh, you know, any of the .NET testing tools that you enjoy using. Uh, for example, I like uh, a product of ours. Um, we have a free uh, option for that as well. It's called uh, Just Mock, and it's a mocking mm -hmm. framework for .NET. It's uh, mm -hmm. completely compatible with not only XUnit, but BUnit. So you can mock out services and things like that, make your components light up with data um, that uh, you don't have to have a concrete implementation of a service for. So you're not going and running HTTP calls against a, a backend somewhere. You can just mock those out with just mock, uh, and it works because it's all .NET. That's what's right. really great about it. That is really cool. Um, so you could have your whole suite of tests, both front end, middle tier, and back end, in written uh, together. You could have uh, making them easier to run all at once. Yeah, you could put those all in a single project. You can split those out however you'd like. Um, I think one of the main benefits here, though, is it's all C sharp. Mm -hmm. So your your front end tests are C sharp. Your back end tests are C sharp. Uh, they're all you know written in the same um, style. So if you choose X unit, those tests aren't going to look any different in B unit than they are in you know say your your controller logic. Uh, it's all going to look like .NET code. It follows the same type of test patterns. You create facts and uh, arrange your tests and, and uh, execute them and assert them. Yeah, that sounds nice. In fact, a lot of times uh, on web applications, I'll have the same validation logic on the front end as I have on the back end. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to be able to test those separately. And if it's the same uh, the same language, if I could copy paste the code, but I can get close. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, a lot. A lot of times with uh, front ends like Angular and React, you have uh, those situations where you might validate something on your C sharp API on the back end, and then you have to go rewrite that in JavaScript on the front end. And tests for that might be written in TypeScript. Right. <laughs> so now you're running something like Jest that you know had you have. I don't know how many configuration files that you need to put together to make those things work. Um, in the scenario with Blazor, you have you know you have your Microsoft unit test or your X unit test, and everything looks and functions the same uh, from your test window in Visual Studio. If I'm using a tool like B unit, does that free me from having to do the um, uh, the more traditional web UI testing using tools like Selenium? Or is that uh, something else? That's actually a really excellent question. So the way I, I like to look at it is you have a couple different types of tests. Uh, you have a unit test where you have, as the name implies, a small unit of work that you're testing. So that might be your component, your individual UI component that you're testing. Uh, that's where BUnit really shines. Um, you can create bigger, more integrated tests with BUnit as well, where multiple components are communicating. Maybe you have a mock in there, you're, you're testing like cascading dropdowns, for example. Uh, when I select this dropdown, A, does it populate the values in B uh, the way I expect it to? Uh, that's something that you can do um, 
with, uh, with B unit as well. But I don't think it eliminates the need for end-to-end -end testing, uh, like, like you're saying with Selenium. Uh, Selenium and, and products like that have, uh, definitely have a role here as well. Um, we have one at Progress too. Uh, it's called Telerik Test Studio. Uh, so it's very similar to Selenium. Uh, the major differentiator with uh, Test Studio and Selenium is Test Studio comes with this really cool thing called the test recorder. So you don't have to be a unit or uh, a integration testing expert or um, uh, automated testing expert. You can actually hand this tool to a QA even. Uh, they don't have to have any uh, development tools other than Test Studio. And what it does is it loads the application up in the browser and gives them a point-and-click tool mm -hmm. where they can uh, hover over an element and um, you'll get a contextual menu that says this element has a date property and it, um, you might expect it to have this date in it. And you can just click that button and it will create a unit test or sorry, a uh, sorry, not a unit test. It will create a uh, functional test that will go out and validate all of those things that you clicked on. So it, it's kind of like a macro where it's recording mm -hmm. everything you're doing on the screen and you're selecting uh, points for it to inspect on the browser window. So the major benefit there is uh, over, say, a, a B unit test is uh, I can take this automated test I created with my recorder tool and then say, apply that test to Edge, Chrome, and Firefox, and it will just go out on its own, test all three of those browsers, and if any differences between those browsers come up, it'll report back an error. Um, another thing that it can do is, uh, and this is something that's beyond what just uh, BUnit can do is, not only can it check HTML that's rendered, but it can take a photograph of those screens hmm. and it can do a comparison between those uh, images that it took. So that's a very powerful tool because that can yeah. pick up nuances uh, between different browsers that you might not catch in an HTML test. Oh, yeah. Um, it can OCR test. <laughs> so a, if you're rendering things like PDFs, in the browser and you want to mm. test to make sure the outputs are there, it can actually OCR those documents mm. and um, it can do responsive design testing, you name it. So there's a whole different category of testing that those automated tests can hit that BUnit can't. Um, and then another differentiator with Test Studio is those tests are C-sharp as well. So you're mm. still in .NET with that one. All right, so the tools like Test Studio, which are extremely powerful and you can do all those things end to end, uh, have uh, way more features, but the the drawback to those is they take a long time to run. So if you're in you know, heads down coding, trying to make changes and get fast feedback, that's not ideal. Something like <laughs> BUnit next year is way better for that sort of thing. But before you actually push a release out, that's when a tool like Test Studio becomes really powerful. Yes, really exactly. Useful. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got kind of like three different scenarios that I gave there. You've got your, your X unit tests that can cover all of your logic. You've got your B unit tests that cover your HTML um, unit testing. Uh, and you can do some integration testing with both of those tools as well. And then on the other end of the spectra spectrum, you have your Seleniums and Test Studios that can do your automated end to end tests. Uh, so if you have all three of those, you've got like the holy grail, right? Uh, you know that your your application's pretty much bulletproof at that point. Well, the holy grail is my quest. <laughs> I seek the grail. What is your favorite color? <laughs> Blue. No green. Uh, um, uh, this is, where do people go to learn more? Uh, so there is uh, a blog post I have out at telerk.com. Uh, so if you look at our blogs at blogs.telerk.com, you can find uh, more information there. Um, and then there is the video that I did that you mentioned at uh, .NET Conf. So if you do a quick Google search for .NET Conf, you'll find uh, the videos for those presentations there as well. Those are up on, mm -hmm. on YouTube from a link from the .NET Conf homepage. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, you could follow me on Twitter at Ed Charbonneau, C-H-A-R-B-E-N-E-A-U. And uh, I can point you towards any of those resources. 
Uh, excellent. And I know um, you've always done a lot of online. You've got a strong online presence, but I'm guessing even more so this year. Yeah. So we've been doing uh, with Progress and, and myself uh, independently, uh, we've kind of tried our hand at Twitch this year. So oh. Twitch is a uh, streaming platform. If you're not familiar <clears throat> with it, it originated for gamers. Uh, right. So it's kind of like YouTube live streaming video, but it was primarily dedicated towards uh, gaming folks. And uh, there, there's there been a lot of coders. Uh, Jeff Fritz is one of the folks that's Jeff, helped. Jeff uh, seems to be the pioneer yeah, in that. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. <laughs> he He's kind of really pushed uh, the envelope as far as uh, what can be done on Twitch from a coding perspective. Cool. So we have, <laughs> yeah, we have... Um, a channel called Code It Live. So it's twitch.tv slash Code It Live. And then I also have a channel under my own name. And I have a show on Code It Live that's an hour of Blazer every week. And then I have my Friday show that's kind of like an office hours, whatever I'm tinkering with or working on. I live stream for a few hours each Friday. Oh, so, very cool. Yeah, you know, Wednesday and Friday, uh, you can catch me on Twitch. Excellent. Ed, thank you so much for your time. And you and your family, please stay safe. Thanks so much, David. I uh, wish the same to you. David, last time I was on your show, I said we were living in a simulation. Well, friends, it's time to reboot that technology because we've all seen what has happened to 2020. It's time for a restart. <laughs>